Hey guys, Julian here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make warped glitchy drums in the style of Igloo Ghost. I've gotten a ton of requests for this one, and so as usual, you can get the project file and samples from this video in the description, and if you're a patron on my Patreon, check there because they'll be available. Let's get started. So, this is the loop you heard in the intro, we're at 157 BPM, and the first sound I have for you is the kick, which is two layers, and it sounds like this. So like I said, this is two layers. We have this one, kind of like the tighter, more punchy kick, and then we have this one, which is like that big, boomy kind of trap kick. So with these, you can see it's really simple. There's not really any processing on them. It's really just about getting like the right layers. Like when I was listening to a lot of Igloo Ghost music, I was hearing like in these kind of tracks where the drums are more sparse and like, you know, there's more space in between them. He tends to just be really, really good at laying these together. and the key is to get the best of both. Like, you don't want too much of just this. Because just that on its own. Just really, I mean, it doesn't really carry it. It's just kind of flat and boring. But too much of just this one. And it doesn't really have enough punch. It doesn't really sound right in the mix. Like, that kick doesn't really fit in the mix on its own. So, again, the key is just to really layer them together right and with that it's just like a game of leveling it like this one is much louder than this one and i think that's what makes them work together so well so then the next sound we have here is this little like warping pitch down thing which sounds like this so i was trying really hard to recreate those kind of sounds that you hear in igloo ghost tracks where it's like this it's like Basically, the way what what it is is it's like a saw wave or a similar waveform to that s pitching down. And what happens is you pitch it down so low that you basically hear like the individual cycles of the waveform, like those things at the end where it just sounds like t -t 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 -t. that's literally just hearing the waveform restarting and looping over and over. And yeah, so the way I created this was basically using a saw wave, like I said, and then I've got this pitch envelope on it, an operator here. So what the pitch envelope is doing, you can see, is it's just going from, I think, plus 12, so like an octave higher than the note I put in, um, and then it's just going all the way down to minus 48, minus 48 semitones, that is. And then, yeah, I just kind of played around with the decay and got it so it would play, like, just the right timing. This plays for about, or actually, it plays for exactly a bar. And so the key here is just to kind of play around with the timing of it to get it to, like, go down like that. It's really not that complicated of an effect, but it's one of those things that if you've never really played around with this kind of stuff before or you don't really know how this stuff works, it can be a little bit weird. Like, it, you wouldn't really know how to recreate it necessarily. Um, but that's pretty much how you do it. And the only reason why I use the pitch envelope here instead of going in and using Ableton's little pitch modulation MIDI control thing is because when you do it this way with the pitch bend inside of the clip, sometimes like if you pause it on one of the points when it's pitched down, it'll just freeze on that point and then it just messes the whole thing up. So when you use the pitch envelope, it just makes it really clean and simple. So then after that, I've added a few effects to kind of, you know, spruce it up a bit and make it a little bit bigger. Here's what it sounds like without anything and you'll kind of see why I needed to do this. So yeah, on its own, really just kind of sounds like a very obvious saw wave. So the first effect I have on here is a flanger. And what I've got going on with this flanger, as you can see, dry wood is at 100%. I've got no LFO, no envelope. I'm not modulating it with any of those, but I am automating this delay time. So it's just basically going down. Um, you can hear the difference that makes. So here's without it, and then with it. So you can hear it's just kind of like, pitching down with it it adds like a little extra element to it and makes it just a little bit more detailed and it's very subtle but i like i feel like it, yeah it just adds that extra little like subtle detail if that makes any sense then after that i've got this overdrive here which is pretty simple i just kind of turn up the resonance on the filter and then i turn the dry wet up all the way here's what that sounds like so you can hear it because of the way this sound is it doesn't really sound like a super strong distortion and it's more just kind of adding like that interesting texture to it, I feel like. Then after that, I've got OTT, which sounds like this. And so that's what's really kind of like, you know, bringing it up and giving it even more of that like metallic, just kind of like warped texture. If you don't know what OTT is, it's a famous preset for Ableton's Multiband Dynamics. You can find it 
there. You should have it if you have any, any Ableton, any version of Ableton. Um, and yeah, all it does is it stands for OT, OTT stands for over the top. So it's just this really over the top multiband compression where it's pulling up all those frequencies that aren't quite as loud as like the main ones that you're hearing when you just hear the sound on its own and just pulling them up. So again, like it just has this really cool kind of like synthetic texture to things. And yeah, and then after that, I just have an EQ8 cutting out the low end because OTT tends to add a lot of low end and the overdrive also does. So yeah, just kind of cut that out. And there we go. That's how I did that sound. The next thing we've got here are these two little toms, which sound like this. Which, you heard these in the intro, they're just kind of like in there. And to give like a little fill element, I guess, at the end of every four bars. Um, you can see, pretty simple, I just got these two samples, put them in a drum rack, and then made that little pattern. Igloo Ghost has a lot of these kind of drums in his, in his tracks. Like, if you listen, and like really, really listen for it, he has a ton of different like fills and little glitch sounds and stuff like that going on at all times. So it's just kind of like to have that. Like without this, it's just a little flat at the ending there. It doesn't really, it just doesn't flow as well. So like I said, the way I did this was I just got these two little kind of like short tom samples. I wanted something a little bit tighter because this beat, it, it just would have fit in a little bit better than like some big, huge tom samples. Um, and yeah, then after that, all I did was I just added a bit of saturation. You can see I got the drive set here. Turn the bass frequency down a little bit on this analog clip. And yeah, that's pretty much it for the toms. So the next thing I have here is this group, which I called Clap Thing. And the reason why I called it Clap Thing is because it's kind of a clap, it's kind of a snare. I'll show it to you. So on its own, the clap slash snare sounds like this. And so what we've got going on here is we have three sort of main elements, well two main elements, one little optional element, and then we have this little like reverse thing that's going into the clap. So I'll show you that first. Basically that just sounds like this. And all it is is it's these two samples. I had this one which was like a key sound I had. There's the original sample of that. Like it's literally just a recording of like hitting some keys or something. I'm not exactly sure. It was just something I had on my hard drive. And then I also took this snare, like that sample. And basically what I did was I just reversed those two and then I lined them up with like the start of the clap. And you can see the clap starts here and then yeah, this just kind of goes into that. And then same thing with the snare over here. Like, yeah, you can see it just lines up. Pretty simple, but it kind of gives it like a nice lead in going into the clap. If I turn that off, you can hear. I mean, the clap just kind of hits. Like, this gives it just a little bit more, like, detail and makes it a little bit more interesting. So then, for the actual clap, like I said, I've got these two main layers and then this sort of optional layer. All together, they sound like this. And yeah, so the first layer is the snap. And all this is, is like this really punchy snap sample, which I just put through a bunch of reverb. So this is kind of meant to be, like, the big sort of, like, spacey thing in here. This is a very sparse pattern with these snares. Like you can see, they only hit one time every two bars. So you have room to have like a lot of reverb on one of the sounds. And so that's the purpose of that is serving. The next layer we have is this clap, which sounds like this. This is more like the sort of cracky punch. Like this is meant to be more of like that kind of like really hard hitting like mid range part that makes it really snap through the mix. And then the last layer I've got here is this little optional snare thing, which sounds like this. So all this is actually is it's just this little tone I created with Operator. And what it's doing is it's turning this from a clap into a snare. If I play it, here's what it sounds like with it. And here's what it sounds like without it. So as you can see, kind of a big difference there, even though this is like a small thing. And yeah, so if you don't know like how snares kind of work, Basically, usually with a snare, you have like sort of the sort of sizzle part, like in the high end and in the high mid range. And then in like the low mids to the low end, you have like the punch. Like that's what really gives it that like impact. And so this is just to recreate that. We have like the high end stuff. And then this is just adding that like low mid range punch. So the way that I created this was using operator. I basically set the w the oscillator to the. I'm only using one oscillator, and I set it to this fixed frequency thing. And what this allows you to do is just set it at a frequency, and then no matter what note you play on the keyboard, like I'm playing, 
bunch of different notes there on the keyboard, and it's playing all that same 214 hertz frequency. So this is really useful if you're trying to create something like this, like a punch for your snare or something, where you just want it to be at one frequency, and that's that. So that's what I did. Basically, I've got that. I've got it doing a sine wave. You can see the K is pretty short here. It's just kind of like a short little punchy hit. Um, and then I've got a pitch envelope on that. And the pitch envelope is just giving it a bit more impact. That's what gives it like the transient at the start of the sound, like that that little bit of yeah, just like more of a click. If I turn it off, you can hear it doesn't punch through quite as much. So yeah, that's pretty much it for the snare or the clap thing, I guess, as I called it. Like I said, like the main things here are these two they are this clap and the snap and then having that little reverse key sound and the snare. And then this little optional snare thing at the bottom. In some of Igloo Ghost tracks, I've heard it, and in some, I haven't. So I figured I would include it in there. So then the last layer we have here is this little clock sample, which sounds like this. So what I was trying to do with this was I was trying to give it something a little bit, like, glitchier. Um, you may hear sounds like this a lot in Igloo Ghost tracks. And I think this is the way he would do this. I'm not entirely sure. I mean, there are a lot of ways you could do this. But basically, what you do is get, like, kind of a clicky percussion sound like this. Like that. Like, that's that's a sample of a clock. You could get a whole bunch of other things. And then I just put it in here. And I made, like, this kind of pattern where it plays for two bars, just that straightforward eighth note pattern. And then for two bars after that, it's doing this triplet thing. So I changed the grid to triplets here. If I set it to eighth note triplets, you'll see. Yeah, and then it's just doing eighth note triplets, and I chopped it up. So what this does is it just kind of creates, like, this cool, like, varying pattern where you kind of have, like, one part that's a little bit smoother. Like, this first part is a little bit softer because it's just doing eight, eighth notes there. And then it gets more intense here. And so the Google Ghost plays with this kind of dynamic a ton, and I think it's a really, really good way to make your beats more dynamic and less just kind of, like, flat and simple. Like, it takes it from just this loop to something where it's got like tension building and like I said like it's just going from a lot smoother to more intense and I think that's really cool to play around with so that's how I did that and then on top of that I have this beat repeat so I actually almost never use this effect but it's very useful here if you're trying to create like a glitchy kind of sound so I really just kind of played around with the settings like I, I just found something that sounded cool and you can hear it's generating all those cool glitches on top of this And the reason why I like using something like beat repeat as opposed to just going in and doing these kind of things by hand is the beat repeat is constantly generating new things. Like, it's constantly doing a bunch of different random stuff that you just wouldn't really be able to think of on your own. You know, it's like, not that it's creating the creativity for you or doing the creativity for you, whatever you would say, but it's sort of like giving you, like, new creativity. Like, it's just giving you ideas that you never would have been able to think of or maybe would have thought of, but you wouldn't have come to them as quickly as with this. Like, it's a really, really good way to just generate interesting sound and add some kind of, like, organic randomness to your track. Because, truth be told, like, I know this isn't really the sound we're going for here, but what makes, like, live instruments, like, live drums sound so organic and real is that it's never the same thing twice. Like, if you hit a snare, a snare drum, for example, is never going to be exactly the same sound twice because you're never going to hit it in exactly the same space. There's never going to be... just There are a million factors in that and a million variables that would make it not be the same thing twice. And so if you want to make, like, organic kind of sounds or sounds that have, like, an organic kind of, like, human feel to them, but not even that that's what we're going for here, but, like, if you're trying to create that same kind of thing digitally where you would never have the same sound twice, basically... This is the way you do that, is by having kind of like random effects like this, where it's just creating all these different repeats and creating all these things out of just this very simple thing that we're feeding into it that, yeah, like we just wouldn't have been able to think of on our own. So that's pretty much it for this one. I just want to show you guys some techniques and talk theory a little bit. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. So that's going to be it for today, guys. As usual, you get the project file and samples from this video in the description, so make sure to check that out. If you're a patron on my Patreon, check there because it'll be available. As always, you can also make sure to like and subscribe and check out all my social media, which is in the description and on the screen now. Thank you so much, everybody, and I will see you tomorrow with another video.